Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and in this video, I'll be bringing you news from the PC cooling industry. This is actually the second in what will hopefully be a long series of videos bringing you the latest and greatest from the PC cooling industry. In my previous video, I detailed news from Noctua and Scythe, and it really proved to be very popular. People loved the format and wanted to hear more. So in this video, I'll be bringing you more news from three different manufacturers, Deep Cool, Be Quiet, and Silverstone. Now this is just focused on the news. I will not be doing any reviews, but I will be doing a few unboxings, including of the products you see here. And I'll be giving you a more in-depth look at these manufacturers and how they came to be major players in the PC industry. So let's start with Deep Cool. Deep Cool was actually founded back in 1996 in Beijing, China. It's new to this channel. I only started reviewing their products in 2020, but wow, they've been around a really long time. Now, I came to know them from their Castle series of all-in-one coolers, but that's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the products they offer. They also have cases, and I did do a profile of one of their low-cost cases, the MacCube 110 Micro ATX case, which comes in around $50 and offers tons of style and performance at that price point. But of course, Deepcool offers cases at a variety of price points, and I do hope to be reviewing some of those in the future. But I'll be focusing on cooling here, and this is their latest product. A lot of people have asked me to review it. It's the AS500+. Plus. Now the AS500 has got a lot of attention in the press already. It's a 140 millimeter tower cooler with a single 140 millimeter fan. This version adds an additional fan for just $10 more. So this comes in at $70. Now it doesn't have a ton of competition in the 140 millimeter size class because most of the coolers in that class use a dual tower style, which is both larger and tends to be more expensive. The AS500 Plus at $70 could be quite competitive and also offer better compatibility with smaller systems or with tall RAM heat sinks. Now, one cooler that does come to mind is a Nocto NHU14S. It's pretty old at this point, but it was once one of the best coolers out there. It's been outclassed in my mind by coolers like the smaller Scythe Fuma 2, and that would be the cooler I'd be comparing the AS500 Plus to in a review if I do get around to doing that. So definitely post down below if you're interested in hearing more about this cooler. Now, Deepcool also has a lot of all-in-one liquid coolers. I featured a few of them on the channel, and they've been updating these models with some new ARGB fans. Now, I don't know the performance of these. I've only tested them with the standard non-ARGB fans, and it could change when you do change the fan style and design. Another thing I should mention about Deepcool is they've undergone a complete rebranding effort for 2021. They've dropped their GamerStorm sub-brand, where a lot of their products were marketed under previously, like the Castle products that I featured on the channel. And they do have a new logo that they say is inspired by the do-it-yourself PC community. So it's kind of like a D and a C built up from parts, as they say, or pixels. It's kind of unique, a little bit abstract, but hey, that was up to the marketers to decide. I'm not going to explain it for you, but you will see that logo on a lot of their new products going forward, and you'll see some new box art as well. This product that I have here, although it's their newest, the AS500 Plus, still has some of their old art on it, so I do think this will probably be updated in the near future. Now let's move on to the next company I'm going to be featuring today, and that is Be Quiet. It's also been around a really long time, founded in Germany in 2002. It's actually a sub-brand of a previous company called Liston, which was founded in 2000 as a PC retailer. They came out and said, you know what? We need to find some quieter power supplies and we don't see them, so we're gonna create them ourselves. And that's how they created Be Quiet in 2002, just as a sub-brand of a local retailer. Really interesting story. Now, later on, they of course released other products, including PC cooling and then PC cases. And that's what they're best known for at this point outside of Germany, although they're still a top seller of power supplies in their regional market. Now, I have personally fallen in love with Be Quiet's cases ever since reviewing their Purebase 500 back in late 2019, and then the knockout win, the 500DX in spring of 2020. Then I reviewed the Silent Base 802 in January 2021, and I found my next favorite case. I've been using the Pure Base and Silent Base cases in nearly all of my PC component reviews because they are so great to work with. I have the choice of a lot of cases, but I use Be Quiet cases because they're really top quality, they're easy to get in and out of, and they look great in videos. So you're gonna keep seeing Be Quiet featured on this channel even when I'm not reviewing a Be Quiet product. Now, in terms of new products, from Be Quiet, they don't have a ton to offer yet in 2021. They did release the Silent Loop series of all-in-one coolers, but not in the US. Now I've asked them to make a statement about this. They declined to, but I'm gonna fill in the blanks here and say, I think this is a patent issue relating to an 
Asetek patent. Now, Asetek is based in Denmark. They do hold a patent for specific designs of all-in-one coolers. And my guess is that's why the Silent Loop is not reaching the US, despite the fact that the Pure Loop, which was released in fall of 2020, did reach the US. So I will not be reviewing the Silent Loop here on the channel because I am based in the US. On the other hand, I probably will review the Pure Rock 2. This was released in mid-2020. It's one of their latest air coolers. They do have a Pure Rock Slim 2, which was released in early 2021. I'm not going to be reviewing that because it's really too budget for my audience. It comes in about $25. It's a 92 millimeter three heat pipe cooler. And for my test system, it's not really ideal. So I'm not going to be testing the Pure Rock 2 Slim, but I might test the Pure Rock 2. And I have the black version here, which looks really good. Comes in at $45, gives you a lot of style and substance for a good price. Last but not least, we come to Silverstone, a company I have featured numerous times on the channel, which may well be the best known of the three manufacturers I'm profiling here today, but ironically, it's also the youngest, founded in 2003 in New Taipei City, Taiwan. Now, there's an interesting backstory to the founding of this company. It was actually created by a number of employees of Cooler Master who broke away from that larger, well-known company to create something that was a little bit more nimble, a little bit more adventurous. So that's what Silverstone came out of. And since then, they have done a lot of pioneering things, particularly in the small form factor market. Now, their newest product is right here, the Hydrogon D120 ARGB. It's actually the first cooler released in the new Hydrogon series. Now, despite the name, this doesn't have anything to do with liquid, at least not yet. But what they are offering here is a high performance, compact, dual tower 120 millimeter cooler. This cooler may remind you of another one I featured prominently on the channel, namely the Scythe Fuma 2, another dual tower, dual fan, 120 millimeter class model. But Silverstone has informed me they're not attempting to take on the Fuma 2 directly because the D120 is a little bit smaller, just 153 millimeters tall and not as deep, which means it will integrate a little bit better in small form factor chassis. I found in particular the Fuma 2, where it fits in chassis often requires the removal of exhaust fans. And that means you're losing a little bit of cooling potential by using the Scythe Fuma 2. So the D120, while it may not compete directly Directly with the larger Fuma 2 could provide better overall results if you can use those exhaust fans in your chassis. Now, one issue with the D120 is it's coming in at $75 retail price in the US. It's a little bit higher than Silverstone had anticipated. It is being hit by new tariffs because the exemptions have expired for 2021. The price may be a little bit lower in other regions, but in the US it's $75. And we've seen some other price increases as well. You know, the Noctua NHU-12S Chrome X Black, which I recently profiled on the channel, is now $80. The D120 may actually be able to get ahead of its Noctua competition, but of course the competition isn't standing still. We have things like the Deepcool AS500 Plus at $70. Only a benchmark shootout will tell which of these coolers is really worth your money. So if you're interested in any of these, definitely post that down below. In terms of other products coming out of Silverstone this year, they've told me they're really going to go after some niche markets after focusing on mainstream products in 2020. I think that's gonna mean some small form factor products and maybe some premium products as well. Now, I do know that they have some plans to refresh their slim fan line, no details yet, and they also have something really cool, a new model in their air penetrator line of air channeling fans, it's AP140i Hydra Node. This is actually coming out of a partnership with ASUS, which is innovating a new fan control system on some of its latest motherboards, specifically in the Z590 market. Now, ASUS has this new Hydra Node system. Now, at first I thought this had to do with liquid, but no, it's like Hydra as in many-headed Hydra. What it allows you to do is control three fans via one PWM header. Now, you may say, well, yeah, I can already do that with a splitter. No, this is a little bit different. It allows you to control those three fans independently via a three-in-one splitter. All you need is one of these new ASUS motherboards, and then you need a Hydra Node compatible fan. And it gets better than that. Not only can you control each of those three fans independently and read their TAC readouts, you also get information on the model name and the number of hours they've been operating. So basically, ASUS is trying to innovate a smart fan system. I think this is fantastic. Yes, it's proprietary right now. Yes, you're gonna to have to have a motherboard and a matching fan that works with the system, but I anticipate this will become really popular and broaden out to a lot of manufacturers, a lot of different model lines. It makes a ton of sense. It allows you to use a lot more fans in your motherboard and control them independently, and also gives you information you can't otherwise get nowadays. So I love innovation, and ASUS and Silverstone are bringing it with the Hydra Node system. 
I do hope that we'll see some new cases from Silverstone. They were going to release the Alta F1 late last year. It was inspired by their Legendary Fortress series. Now, I did post a few polls in my community forum in late 2020 to gauge interest among my viewers, and it seemed like the Alta F1 could be very popular, but unfortunately, since then, Silverstone has informed me that they just couldn't meet the price target of around $200 that they had in mind when they previewed the chassis at CES 2020. Now, as you can imagine, a lot has changed in the world since then. Freight, logistics, materials, manufacturing have all gone up in price and the Alta F1 may fall prey to these circumstances and may never see the light of day. Hopefully, however, Silverstone will take this opportunity to turn its attention back to the small form factor market where it has dominated for so long. Now, I did test their SG14 and SG15 chassis in fall of 2020, and they were very good, but the competition is really heated up in the small form factor market, and I think Silverstone has more work to do to really beat the competition. I have no doubt that they can do it. They just have to put their mind to it. So I'm hoping they'll do that in 2021. Now, if you have any questions about any of the products that I've previewed here, definitely post them down below. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give me a like and subscribe and tell me you want to see more of this type of content. And as always, I'm Ari from Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.